not loving that oil pattern. Try to see where it seems to start. Definitely leaking on, I think it's this second tube. That's fine. Yeah, it looks like it's that second tube. That's gonna be where that oil's coming from. Yeah, we're just checking for more leaks in this region since we got it all open. That's odd. Our our pipe is over our end bell. Instead of using the increaser from 7 eighths to inch and an eighth, it looks like they just put it on the outside of the bell. All right, um, this unit's freezing up. It was thought to be low on charge. It's absolutely got a leak. We got a video of the leak. This line is cold, too cold, way too cold. In fact, it's 54 degrees cold. So we didn't like that. So we got a second probe before our filter dryer in here, and we're measuring our temperature drop across our filter dryer. Should be zero PSI or zero temperature and it is 23 degrees of pressure drop across my filter dryer. We're plugged up, we're plugged up real good. Okay, so yeah, you can see our low side's way low, our high side looks low. Uh, there is no subcooling because we're just flashing. This is a flash line, right? Our metering device is now our filter dryer. All right, we got a repair underway. So we are uh, about 1.3 psi, and we got one pound. That's not good. That's like an eighth or inch and a quarter suction line from a 3 8 refrigerator. And our unit should have had about 111, what's that, seven something pounds? Just in this, plus whatever's in this big chase. So safe to say we didn't have enough refrigerant. Uh, but while we got this system open, we're gonna be making the repair, or an attempted repair on this leak here. This filter dryer is pluggo buggo. We had like 25 plus PSI or uh, Fahrenheit drop across it, so that's no good. Uh, but yeah, customer wants to attempt a repair. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, yeah, negative PSI. One pound, four and a half ounces. Our machine just decided it's complete. Um, we did purge it down. We're seeing if we're gonna rise up at all. This refrigerant smells weird. Not bad so much as just very like chemically. But we're super, super low. That's fine. While it's really easy to purge the system, we're just gonna purge with a little bit of nitrogen. Uh, really the, the goal here, I like to also just bump, bump, bump. It's to just kind of flow out any residual refrigerant that we can. This is gonna help our pressure tests be more accurate. It's gonna help our vacuum go a little bit faster. Uh, I usually like to let this go for 30 seconds or a minute or so. This is an HVAC school where they talk about uh, how incredibly long you should probably be perching for. But yeah, we're just trying to clear out what we can, easy refrigerant, mobile refrigerant, to try to make our pressure tests that are 
in the next phase go a little bit easier before we go hacking and mowing and we have to really think hard about how to purge. All right, so I was making a plan. My leak is like on the bottom of this, which is annoying. Um, I can lift it a little. So I'm gonna have to cut the steel out. I don't want to affect this screw hole or that screw hole. This one's gonna, uh, it's gonna be hard. I'm gonna try my best not to hack and mow those out. Maybe I can get from the inside. That's just a much harder cut. All right, went ahead and unwired our compressor so that we can get our panel out of the way. We're gonna just lift this coil up a little bit. We're still connected in here. We can cut it if we need to. Just trying to get to the inside of this to try to save these two screw holes. Plan is with the mini grinder, we're gonna cut from the inside and try to make two cuts. And we'll go from there. We got a couple cuts, see on either side of the tube. Now we got to try to get them across so we can get that piece of steel off the copper. We're gonna cut from this side and try to make a square that can pop out. Now we got a frame. Uh, we just got to kind of connect the dots. We do have this Dremel tool. My Dremel's MIA, so we got to use it on the drill. But let's see what we can do to make this happen. Okay, we're just working through what tools are gonna work the best. We gap this out a little to see if we get snips in there. That's not gonna happen. I'm thinking this Sawzall blade, I mean, we gotta be real controlled with it, but I think that's gonna give us our best shot. Since we already have our back roots cut, which are gonna kind of work as a guide. So yeah, let's get the Sawzall in the mix. Through on two. All right, our Sawzall got us there. We got these two cuts. So now, this little guy should be free-ish. Now we gotta get it off the line. There it is. That last bit's always a pain to get off of there. But now we have access to some clean copper we can work with. This little guy wanted to be free too. But so we are using our pick tool to remove a couple fins away from our damaged area so that we can get in there and brace. To replace this interior filter dryer, not really my favorite. We got this piece fit up. We are flowing nitrogen into our suction through our compressor we have this valve closed so no flow this direction i can feel flow there that's our stub for uh our straight through so we are flowing through our coil out to here we're on braze we got hot block on the joints we don't really want to mess with and we are going to coat up this right here so it always makes sense to kind of prepare with your torch, right? Know how you're gonna how you're gonna get in here. So we're at the right angle. Let's get this going. Woo. 
All right, so here is our stub. Uh, we're replacing this because we've seen before where somebody just melted the shit in here so bad uh, that it was another restriction. So we're just getting it out of the way. These are a relatively inexpensive part and I'd rather just do this repair once. All right, we're getting everything fitted up. New ones going in, braid to braise. I did the back of that outside uh, just because it's easier to get access to it before we go in. Then I got this top one to do. Uh, we got the outside of the new service port, filter dryer on each side. We're giving it lots of room, so it's easy to check this pressure drop because that was an insanely bad pressure drop and it might happen again. So we want to put this in a place where we can easily keep it up, keep track of it uh, and see how it's doing plug-wise. So we did our first little pressure test and our patch is leaking. So we gotta get in there and do that. This was unexpected. So the oil down here was on fire for a second and it singed our paint. So not ideal, but is what it is. So we're gonna get back in there for round two. We're gonna attack from this side because this end of our cap is not seat. All right, my torch tip's getting a little funky. So it's time for the tip cleaning. Right, so we're gonna get one of these that fits. It's really important we want to flow a little bit of oxygen when we do this. The one hand is special. Okay, so this tip should fit. Yeah, kind of work in the sides and then get the file bit out. You want to make sure the front doesn't have any goobers on it. And there we go. We should be good. But yeah, if your tip is not straight on and it's kind of doing one of these or you got a little wild hair on the side, it's time to clean. All right? Make sure you got the tip cleaner, your torch kit. The saga continues. So we're leaking through our suction line service valve, which I would assume has something to do with the way that was brazed on. You can see we got pretty freaking hot at install. So we got to change that too. So luckily we noticed that early enough in the day where we got both the valves. But yeah, our pressure test was showing a slow leak, filled them with bubbles, bubbled up. To avoid this valve getting torched up like the last one, Right, we're gonna use our hot block. We really wanna make sure that the valve body is protected, right? We wanna compress it down so it's in good contact. And that's gonna make sure this valve stays the valve. We got that raised in inch and a half to seven eighths um, and then into the fittings as opposed to this uh, inch and eighth over the stub. Small leak in here somewhere very very small but it's an awful lot of grease out here but this top was letting some it's a pretty small leak but it was definitely leaking through here and somebody had cranked this down uh, way tighter than it needed to be that was our first clue so yeah this is what it is All right, here comes the wind. So, we're starting our pressure test. Uh, something that I've been doing for a long time. I bring my pressure test up in phases, right? So, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna take it to five and see if it leaks. Then I'm gonna take it up to like 20 or 30, see if it leaks. Then I'm gonna take it up to 50 and see if it leaks. Because sometimes you can find a leak at like two PSI and there's no need to waste nitrogen uh, on your pressure test again and again. So, just something to think about, just kind of coming up the mountain in phases, it's gonna help to save nitrogen uh, if you do end up having a leak. We're on a pressure test, trending in the right direction. We've gained 0.3 over seven minutes. You can see we got slime on all of our joints, big blue. We're looking good. Oh yeah, we're looking good. 
We're mid decay test. One of our probes is decayed down to 300 or up to 300. Our suction line probe has decayed up to 400. We started at a 10 minute timer on this probe's uh, timer. So we are a couple minutes into our decay test. And we can see it here graphically, right? Coming up real slow. finished cleaning up our wiring. A couple uh, clip-in zip ties really helps. I also like to kind of put a zip tie around some of the components so that as this gets unwired you can see which bundle is the fan, right? Which bundle is the compressor, things like that. We tested our capacitor while we were in here. That's a five. We're still testing good. It's a three-phase unit so our capacitor is only for our condenser fan motor. We've got our ICM temperature probe remounted to the copper coil and yeah we are still in the middle of our decay test seven minutes on that one or 700 on that one 600 on that one coming up on seven minutes into a decay test so far so good Superheat's a little bit low. We're also, uh, you know, that's more to do with the indoor unit than the outdoor. Low pressure, high pressure, superheat, and so cool. So we also have our low ambient kit in the mix, which is driving up our head pressure artificially. <laughs> which is affecting our subcooling value, which is also messing with our TXV. So we are showing a little bit colder coming back than I'd like to see, but this unit is running much, much better than it was this morning. All right, we made it. We got a nice deep vacuum pulled. We got our restriction cleared. We got a new filter dryer in. Line sets resupported, electricals back in. This bad boy takes nine pounds once adjusted for line set length. Got our repair made down here in that coil. Should be good to go. I'd love a little cleaning. I'd love to get all that oil stain off that coil just so it's easier to find a leak if there is one again in the future. But again, that's not mission critical. That's just something I'd like to do. But yeah, I think we're good to go. This was a coil repair and a fat restriction in our filter dryer. But this unit came right to life, satisfied the space in a few minutes. And now the lights are off and she's waiting for tomorrow. All right.